Hello, welcome to the Exhausted Programmer. My name is Alexander, and today we are talking about Git. Git is free and open source software that is useful for programmers to maintain the changes to their software over time. Git can allow people to see the changes that are made, when they were made, how they were made, and by whom. There's also a chance for the developer who made the changes to put a little message in to explain why they made the changes, which can make it really easy for readability and to understand the ideas behind the changes made. There are products out there that are associated with Git, such as GitHub, which may be useful, but are not actually tied to Git. They're commercial products that are made available first to help people out, but ultimately to help corner the market and to make profit for shareholders. I myself use GitHub, so I'm not saying don't use it, but it is outside the scope of this video, and I just want to make it clear as to why, because GitHub is not Git, GitHub is just a tool that you can use in association with Git. To best understand Git, it is helpful for us to understand the things that Git addresses. The first one is a repository. A repository is just a collection of files. These files might lead to a program, but they might just be a collection of recipes or chapters in a book. For us, in order to have this collection of files, we need a directory. So let's make a directory and let's go into it. And then we need files to have in this directory. I'm gonna create two very simple bash scripts uh, the first one is going to print to the screen test git, and the next one is going to print testing git. We see that these are very similar and very simple. They might not look simple, but if we actually print the files to screen, we can see that they're just very simple files. We can also see with our eyes the changes between the two, which would make editing and fixing this difference easy, but imagine if it was a more complex file. For this, we have tools that will help us compare these files. An early one from the 70s is called diff. If we run diff, it'll make it very clear the differences between the two files, just showing us the lines that are in question. Me personally, I prefer to use vimdiff because it's interactive. With vimdiff, you can give it two or more files. And when you run it, you can see an interactive vim session as well as highlighting that makes it easy to understand the differences. If I made the changes, the differences go away, but you do need to know how to use vim how to use all the different commands, not what we're covering in this video. For both of these methods, there are some other issues in that you have to have both the complete old version and the complete new version, and you have to manually make the changes. That's not good for automation at all, although it could be good for auditing. And maybe in the future, we can look at some of these as a way of comparing different changes in two different files that aren't managed by Git. It is also worth mentioning that Git isn't the first version control system that has ever been out there. There were older ones before it. I personally have used SVN in a professional setting, and I know that there was one called CBS, but I've never touched it, and I know nothing about it. But we're here to use Git. So we already have some files, but how do we get it to be a part of Git? Well, we need to initialize this repository for Git. And with that, there's Git init. This is me from after the fact. Uh, if you're running Git on a new install and it's a newer version of Git, you might see some messages such as this. Uh, the messages are actually pretty helpful. You can just follow what it says to do. Common for the main branch is main. Uh, it says that it doesn't know who you are and you can set this information up pretty simply. And there's no verification. There's no email that you'll get that'll ask you to verify your email uh, no way for it to know if you're giving it your real name or not. So feel free to give it whatever you feel like. It says it initializes an empty Git repository. We know there's two files here, but that's because the files aren't actually a part of the repository yet. We need to add them through a commit. How do we do that? Well, first we have to add the files to the commit and nothing came out. If that bothers you, that's okay. If you're used to Git, then you know that this works. But if you want some sort of visual verification, there is Git status. And we'll be using Git status a lot in this video. Git status shows us that those two files will be committed once a commit is made. So they're still not part of the repository, but they're really close. Another thing you might think to do is to look at Git diff. But the problem with git diff is that nothing has changed. We're just going to add stuff. So let's go ahead and add these two files to the repository. We can give the message for the commit in the command itself. And you do want them to be more descriptive than this, but we're trying to focus on the functionality of git at this point. If you remember though, file one and file two are very similar and we don't need both. So let's remove file two. And with this, we've removed it, but what does that mean? 
Well, first, it has been removed from our local directory, and it has been removed from our local repository once the commit has been committed. But also, Git lets us change files in a way that can be tracked. So let's go ahead and change file one. I will be using them and just so that I can do it in one line. And now the changes have been made. We can see the changes by using cat again, seeing that now it says testing instead of test. Our vim command was a string replaced the word test with testing. And since it's a simple file, that's the only one that needed to be changed. Now we can actually use git def to see the changes. And here it makes it very clear, similar to what we saw in just the diff from earlier. Uh, the old version is both the minus and the red. The new version is the plus and the green. It helps to really spot the changes very fast. It's worth remembering at this point that these changes haven't been made to the repository, just to our local files. And we can see that with git status. What git status is showing us right now is that our commit, once we make it, will delete file two but it won't delete file one because it hasn't been staged yet. How do we stage this file one for the commit? Well, we just need to add it to the commit. And there we see that it has been added to our commit once our commit is made. To make the commit, we just need to do git commit and give it a message. If you don't give it the dash M flag and the actual commit message, it will open up an editor, but we don't need to worry about that right now. There are ways of setting the default editor for Git, but if that's an issue that you're having, a quick Google search can help you fix that. We are up to date in our repository, in our local directory, but before we go, I do want to show off one more feature of Git, and that is the tracking of the changes. If we run Git log, we'll see that there's our two commits. This is our second commit message, and it is where we're at, the head and main. I am running an older version of Git, so the name still is the old version of master, but modern versions will say main. And here's our first commit. We also have these long strings, which is the hash for the commits, which can allow us to do things very complex with Git that is not necessary if you're just one developer. If you want to see more information, we can add some arguments to our Git log, such as a graph. This shows us that this commit is a descendant of this commit. If you have multiple developers or you're just managing multiple branches of your own, which seems quite complex if you're just one developer, uh, you will see these lines being weaved in and out so it makes it clear which commits are connected to which lineage. Finally, if you have a lot of commits, maybe printing out six lines per commit is a lot. You can tell it to just do one line at a time and the lines will be drawn if there's more complexity, but there's only the two lines and there's nothing to connect. I do plan on following up this video with a video on how to use Git with multiple developers. In it, we will see what happens when you have multiple branches and trying to merge those branches back into the main directory. I'm also constantly working on improving the quality of the videos that I make here, trying to keep them into a shorter time frame than what some of the previous videos have gotten to. 30 minute long videos are not fun for me, and I don't think they're fun for the audience either. I have made some changes even to the way that this video was produced. Maybe you noticed them, maybe you did not. But if anything seems off, feel free to drop a comment below and let me know what you think. If you have any questions about this subject or any other subject covered in this channel, comment below, ask questions. If you like what you saw, like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.